Okay. And then let's first talk about the simplest one, which is homogeneous nucleation. And uh, we will also compare that with so-called heterogeneous nucleation. Create of that seed or nucleate either homogeneously, which means everywhere at the same time, or heterogeneously, which means at only selected location. Homogeneous nucleation, as the name suggests, it's what? Uniform throughout the material. Any place it has the equal probability. Equal probability. That's, it's not happening at a special location. Heterogeneous, it's only occurring at a, a specific location. Can be the surface, can be the interface interfaces, can be green boundaries or some other impurity, these locations. Okay? And then homogeneous nucleation, quite often in order for it to happen, in order for homogeneous nucleation to happen, quite often you need what? Large driving force. By large driving force here we are talking about uh, in reality large undercooling, which means the liquid has to be much much the temperature, the actual liquid temperature is much much lower than what? Melting point, because melting point is the equilibrium transition temperature from liquid to solid. You need large driving force, which means you have to be much much lower, below the melting point, or much larger oversaturation. Oversaturation, which means it's a uniform phase, but your actual concentration is much higher than the solubility limit. In order for a homogeneous nucleation to happen, you need this. On the other hand, for heterogeneous nucleation, you don't need large driving force. You don't need the large undercooling. Just uh, a little bit, it will go through the heterogeneous process. And a heterogeneous uh, nucleation depends on what? Special feature and the concentration of the defect. If it's going to happen at, uh, let's say, green boundary, the more the green boundary, the faster it would occur, the more frequently it would occur. Make sense? And uh, believe it or not, the so-called heterogeneous process is much more common. Let me ask you this. It, is it easier to grow a single crystal silicon or to get a polycrystalline silicon? If you imagine, typically, if you just do it roughly, you get a polycrystalline material. That's typical. That's typical. In order to get a shiny, high purity single crystal, you need to be very, very, very careful and very, very, very clean. Make sense? On the other hand, it's much less common. You need to be very, very careful to get a so-called homogeneous nucleation or to get a single crystal. Okay?